Hey guys, welcome to my second tutorial on the Novation Circuit Editor. Today we're going to be covering the settings and file management aspect of the program. This can be found in the top area of the module, as well as the additional two windows that open with the program. The two additional windows that open with the Circuit Editor is a sizing window that includes a zoom function. You can basically just play with this until you get a size of the window that you want. Um, mine's currently set at 91, um, but you can scroll this to however big or small you want it. The open tab will toggle the window on and off. So if I click this, it'll disappear. If I turn it back on, it'll reappear. Now, um, I like to note that if you adjust the zoom, sometimes the display will get off a little bit and glitchy. So the easiest way to fix this is just to toggle the open button and that should fix your issues. The max console section includes messages between the circuit and the circuit editor and initializing and uploading patches. It'll tell you if an error has occurred and various information that is going on with the software. You, you won't use this very often uh, but it can be handy to have just to make sure that the program is uh, operating the way you intend it. The rest of our tutorial is going to be around the top of the module. The MIDI port section indicates whether or not your circuit is appropriately connected to the editor. If it's blue, it's correctly connected. If you have two circuits connected simultaneously to your computer, you should have the option of circuit 1 or circuit 2. Now since I just have one circuit connected my, to my computer, if I select this, it will turn red and give me an error sign here in the Max console. So I'm going to go back to circuit. Now it's synced in and we're good to go. Synth 1 and Synth 2 corresponds to the Synth 1 and Synth 2 parameters on your circuit. So I'm on Synth 2 right now which is green, so if I click here, it's also green. And if I click Synth 1, which is purple, that corresponds to the color in the Synth 1 tab. Now, I don't use Synth 2 very often. I use the circuit editor as a sound design tool, so I typically use it to develop patches and then import to my circuit. I think they included Synth 2 for some, maybe some live editing, um, but I rarely use it for that situation. But if you do, um, it's good to know. The view control dictates what is shown on the circuit editor screen. So right now it's at full. Full shows the macro controls, the mod matrix, and the synth simultaneously. So if I scroll down, you see the macro controls, the synth engine control section, and then the mod matrix section. If I just click synth, it will only show the synth engine control. If I just click macros, it will only show the macro controls. And if I click mod matrix, it will only show the mod matrix controls. Now session is a different animal. This shows parameters related to the reverb, delay, um, some side chaining, your mixer, your global filter, and your drums. I'm going to get into this in detail in another section, but for now, all you need to know is that the session will pull up a completely different window. So I'm going to return to full. Snapshot is an anchoring tool that will allow you to trigger and undo. So if I move the parameters of depth here, maybe change the end position, change the density detune, and then click snapshot, it will save that setting. Now if I change a few other parameters after I've clicked snapshot and click undo, it will revert all of those changes back to when I anchored the snapshot. I would not use redo. I don't think it's operating as intended. If you click this at least in my version, um, it, it does not function as intended. It will change to a completely different patch. So I'm not going to use this, um, 
But just so you know, maybe they'll fix this in an upcoming patch, but right now that does not work. This section here contains three tabs, the patch, the random, and the morph. I'm not going to cover random and morph in this section in this tutorial, but we're going to cover patch. Now the most important section of patch is this center square. This shows you the bank that is currently uploaded to the Novation Circuit Editor. Now this can get extremely confusing because when you first purchase the circuit, what's uploaded on the circuit's patches is reflected on the default patches that are uploaded to the Novation Circuit Editor. So if you don't know what's going on, it's very easy to assume that these patches are what is actually reflected on your circuit. And that's incorrect. These patches are what are currently uploaded to the circuit editor. Now, I do not have the default patches loaded onto my Novation circuit. So I'm going to show you that these don't match up. So if I click on my first patch here, it is not the basic IC square that is loaded in to the default patches of the Novation circuit editor. To show you that, I'm going to get the current patch from the circuit, which will pull the current patch operating on synth1 into the synth1 parameter of the circuit editor. All right, so I'm going to do that. You're going to see Neo Tokyo 2 has now been uploaded which is what I have loaded into my first patch in my patch bank on my, on my Novation circuit. You'll notice that number one in the basic, I, the basic IC square is still there. And if I click on it, it'll, ask, it'll prompt me to ask whether or not I want to save it. And I click continue, it'll now upload the basic IC square. So as you can see, we're operating with two different libraries the one that's on your circuit, and the one that's in the circuit editor. Now I recommend that you make the two reflective of one another, and you curate them to be the same, because that'll resolve a lot of confusion. So if I click upload single patch to circuit, it will bring up a matrix. Now this matrix is reflective of the bank on the Novation circuit. So one corresponds with the first patch on your Novation circuit bank. But if I select one here, it will upload the basic IC square onto my first slot in my bank. So I'm going to do that. It's going to replace the Neo Tokyo 2 patch that was, that was in there to begin with. All right, so let's change this. It's now on Funk Base, which is the fourth in the Novation Circuit Editor Library. And now I'm going to click Get Current Patch from Circuit. And there you go. So I actually had to toggle off of the first position and then back on to the first position in order for it to pull it in. Uh, you'll run into quirks like that all the time with the circuit. Um, it wasn't originally designed to work with the circuit editor. It's meant to be a standalone, um, but it's just some quirks that you have to deal with. Upload all patches to circuit will override 100% of the patches on your circuit and replace them with whatever is in the circuit editor bank. So I don't really mind doing that right now. I'm going to completely replace these anyways. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. As it prompts you, this will override all 64 patches on your circuit. I'm going to click continue and as you can see the save button is blinking right now and there you go so they're all uploaded now so if I click get current patch from circuit it's flat base which is the third on my circuit bank as well as the third on the circuit editor bank these sections 
around the circuit editor bank relate to file management within your computer. So if I click load bank from disk, it will pull up my files and I have some patches saved here. This is specifically for patch bank.syx files. If you want to upload a sequence of patches, you have to collect, click shift, which will then change this to load folder from disks, select it, and then select the patch file you want to upload. As you can see, I already have one designed here. I indexed all of them. The manual suggests that you index them before importing them. I'm not sure if that's necessary, but as you, it asks you to number them. I'm going to click open and it's uploaded my curated bank. So it actually would do the same if I go to my patches and upload the new patches pack. All right. So load single patch from disk will load a single patch that's you, that you select onto the interface of the Novation Circuit Editor. So I'm going to click open here and it's going to change from funk base to morph poly. And there you go. Save bank to disk will export the Novation Circuit Editor bank as a bank.syx file. I'm not going to do that now, um, but as we reviewed earlier, it will look like the new pack patches.syx. If you click shift, it'll give you the option to save a folder to the disk. Now I've never tried that, but I suspect it will export each of these individually, which is pretty useful. Save single patch to disk will save the current interface to your disk drive and store patch will store the current interface to the current slot in your circuit editor library. So I'm currently on Morph Poly. If I click this, it will save it to Funk Base. So I just overrode the third slot and replaced it with Morph Poly. Now, if I don't want to save it to the third slot, well, let's say I want to save it to the fifth slot, I can select Store Patch 2 it's asking me to choose patch in the menu below, below so I can click number nine or number five and number five has now become Morph Poly. So I'm going to get this back to default. So I'm going to load bank from disk, new patch pack dot XML uh, dot SYX. All right and I'm going to upload them to my circuit. It's currently thinking, if you look at the save, it'll be blinking and it's good to go. These little buttons to the right and to the left of the circuit editor bank just uh, change the index. So you can see it cycling through. To the right, you'll see some housekeeping items. Um, up here is the name function. So I can change the name of a patch. The genre and category are really unimportant, but they basically help you to organize. They tell you what type of music your patch is intended for and what category of sound you intended to be. As you can see, after I initialize the current patch, it returns the synth parameters to a standard format. Now, I wanted to give you guys a warning about the name. If you have the free edition, I I used the free edition for a long time, and I'm not convinced that the name renaming works with the free edition. Um, it works with the pro edition, just a heads up to you guys. If you are making your own patches with the free edition, 
uh, you might end up with a lot of huh, init patches. So, one last thing about the settings section of the circuit editor. Um, the view control has a small dot here at the top. If you select it, it'll open up a colors template, which will enable you to select the color of the interface. So you can get it to look however you want. I've never messed around with that, but um, feel free to if you want to make it look different. That about covers it for the settings portion of the circuit editor. If you guys have any questions, feel free to uh, shoot me a comment below. All right. Thanks, guys.